No, people didn't know what was going to happen. Welcome to South Jersey Girls. I'm Klein Aliardi. I'm Jane Feld. I'm Elise Notariani. And I'm Marianne Aliardi. And later in today's episode, we have an interview that Elise did with Fox 49 anchor Shayna Humphreys. But first, I want to talk about my word of the day, which is doom scrolling. Mom, do you remember what that is? I do remember what that is. It is when you're scrolling through all this bad news and you just kind of fall into a bad news cycle. It's my favorite sport. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you couldn't exactly doom scroll when you had like three channels to watch on TV. No, you couldn't do any scrolling actually when there were well, only three on TV. Obviously. Fine. You actually, when I was young, you actually had to get up and turn a knob <laughs> to get to the other station. Wait, you didn't have remotes? Not at no. first. Ah, uh, the dark ages. Wait, that's about? wild. <laughs> you knew we didn't have remotes. I, I may have known that you didn't have remotes, but I did not know that Jane didn't have a remote. Because I'm 80 and she's <laughs> 40. Yeah, and you you could only get your news at certain times, like 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. There wasn't even morning news shows. I think, actually, like, Good Morning America came on at some point, And Good Morning America was a news program. There was none of this, like, let's see who won Dancing with the Stars last night. That would never have... That's news. <laughs> not that. <laughs> Apparently it is. You know how you had, you had the news that was, like, at a set time every single day? We kind of have that in news podcasts. Like, I think about Michael Barbaro from The Daily just all the time. Oh, I love I him. I wonder what he's up to. Like, if he, if he went to bed late last night, like, how he got everything done. I think about him all the time. Um, <laughs> but he gives me my news at, you know, eight in the morning. I tried listening to uh, Up First from NPR, and I did it for a while. You did too. If I would start my day a little earlier some days, I would get frustrated because it wasn't out yet. Because I would be like, no, no, no. I need to start my day now. They were clearly not up. And I just wouldn't listen. I would just be like, all right, well. I'm with that with What a Day, um, which is like the millennial newscast. I love it. And they went on vacation for a week. And I was really, really, really missing it. And when we were young and we could only get set news, like you were just like, ho oh, hum, I guess I have to wait 12 hours for the next no. week. I mean, I know I wouldn't have gone crazy because, you know, it's all you knew, but like- right. I would have gone crazy. I'm always interested in like the transition from not normal to normal. What's wait? What's not normal <laughs> to normal? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, you your mean? your era is obviously the not normal part. Oh my god. Um, and now is normal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Until young, until younger people, people who are 20 years younger than you, get a little older, and then they're going to be talking to you, telling you you're not normal. News will 100% live on Mark TikTok and TikTok alone. Oh. It's happening. I found I out that the state has. A TikTok now. Oh my gosh. That wouldn't have happened back in our old abnormal times. Guys, when are we getting exactly. a TikTok? It's on the list. We're we're getting there. I know we're I know none of us are busy and we don't have a lot to do. Exactly. Yeah. Keep an eye out for uh Oh my gosh. Travel what was it? Travel hacks for South Jersey. It's gonna be great. But when you went from having what Fox, CBS Oh wait, what were the three stations? I have four in my head. ABC. Fox, CBS, and ABC, and NBC. What was what what do I have incorrect there? There was no Fox. Yeah. Oh. Three, six, and ten. That's in Philly. That it was three, six, and ten. Right. But seventeen and forty-eight. Yeah. They weren't all that popular. Did they have news? They didn't have news. Isn't forty eight yeah. E? E? No. E I mean, there wasn't even entertainment news, <laughs> let alone E. Got it. So Here's my question. I am too young to know a time before when there were like 500 channels. Please explain yes. to me how you went from three channels to 500 channels. Wow. It was, it's gradual. Everything's always gradual. Well, so. yeah. That's what I'm most interested in because that means there was a time where there were like eight channels and everyone was like, huh. Everyone was like, aha, uh -huh, so many options. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I think it started with like HBO and Prism. Yeah. And CNN was the first 24-hour news, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was different. But I, I, I feel like, and then the next day there was everything we have now. You know, it just, it's like you don't know what's did, happening. Did you consolidate your entire life before you turned like 30? I think I did. I, I wasn't paying attention, I guess. I don't know. It's just, I remember CNN starting. I remember HBO being very exciting because you could watch movies. Other than that, I don't remember anything else. But what were people, like people must have been like, this is ridiculous. There's no way this will catch on, right? I don't think so. I don't, re oh. I don't remember that. I think it's like the only thing everyone was on board with. Yeah. Well, no, people didn't know what was going to happen. 
I yeah, think. it wasn't, we were, we still agreed on common facts back then. So, yeah. and even saying. with the, tw- even with CNN, it wasn't commentary. It wasn't opinions. It was, they were actually reporting news facts. That's it. Somewhere, I think in the last five years, 10 years, it became all of these opinion shows, all of people just talking about what they believe. I remember that being such a problem because I, I was never, when I was younger, I was never into politics. Like I just did not care. And when I went to DC for school, I was like, oh, I should probably get like figure out what's going on. And I had the hardest time even just finding an outlet that I was like, oh, this is, there's no opinion here. And at the time I didn't know how to read for opinion or watch and and see what's opinion and what's not. So I just, I was so confused for probably about a year and a half trying to figure out like how to even start figuring out the news. Well, what you say is scary because in all these interviews I'm having about social media, and calls for civic education. Like you should have graduated from high school knowing how to read a story oh. opinion from fact. I had to go to I had to go to a journalism school to learn that. I say that all the time about the fact that in schools they need to start teaching kids about how to be on social media. Who I feel I like my kids someone. are getting that that they teach the the librarian was teaching them that even in elementary school. Well, because don't don't kids learn like manners at some point? Like, isn't that in a curriculum somewhere? Not manners, manners not manners, but like like yeah. just kind of how to behave in society. I don't think so. Yeah, Do you, I don't know. You think you had classes that? on that? I mean, like it's like pumped into what they learn. Like that's part of school is you learn how to socialize with other kids. Well, I well, I thought more of like, even just like media literacy, like how to figure out what is even going on. Yeah, right. well, I've heard complaints um, that librarians, like they don't even have them in school, like that, a lot of schools. And that is something that is part of a librarian's curriculum. I mean, they're certainly not getting a librarian right now during a pandemic. I was talking to um, State Senator Troy Singleton today, and he was really pushing civics education and just so people can tell the difference and make up their minds when they hear all this information. I think you'll see that more and more as we realize what a problem it is. We're just waking up to that. Yeah, I think everyone has realized it's a problem, and now we have to figure out what the solution is. Problem is not everyone's going to agree on the solution. Of course. We can't even agree what the problem is, I feel like. Of course. I mean, (laughs) what what do people agree on? Well, The fact that getting eight news channels wasn't a big deal. If you take a step back, though, like, no matter where you are in the political spectrum, we should all believe that um, people should know how to discern a fact from an opinion. I don't think everyone agrees that that people should be able to discern a fact from opinion because that would undercut a large strategy of a large portion of political people, which their strategy is you get all of your information from me and I control how you feel about what's going on in the world. Wow. Even if it's not true. How does because that stop? It stops by civics education. I don't think that's going to happen in certain states. I think you might be surprised. I hope so. Don't you think the 24-hour news cycle makes everything you talk about all day about politics? It's about whatever they're, because they're talking about it all the time and it's in your head all the time and you're reading about it all the time. So, you know, that's what you talk about. And you yeah, also it's also a really supercharged time right now. I was yeah. just like, going to say that. You know, like before the election, that we could still have normal conversations. Yeah, remember when that plane disappeared? Which what? one? The one that just disappeared? No, not the one that... Yeah, they found that. the one that just disappeared. No, the okay. one that disappeared in, like, um, the, like, Indian Ocean, and they talked yeah. about it for days. Oh, a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I'm still waiting for them to find that. Oh. We just, we really just need a royal wedding. Yeah, like I love, awesome. I love a story that everyone can unite behind. So like, I feel like everyone was trying to find that missing plane. What else did we unite behind? Um, the dress. Haram, we got behind the dress. Um, Wait, what did you say? Harambe. What? what? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? What did you say? Yeah. Harambe. You remember when they shot, they shot the gorilla? I feel like that's just become like a frat boy mascot now. <laughs> the newest thing that happened that we all kind of it was society rallied behind the same way that society rallied behind Tiger King, if you want to call that news. <laughs> that was, oh, that, that was, was definitely news. Good. Yeah, it was definitely Ooh. news. It was a show. It was, but it was news. It was something, um, you know, happening in the animal community. Mm. <laughs> in the animal kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was so much better to talk about the, all that crazy stuff than than the real crazy stuff. Yeah, the real crazy stuff. So today we're here with Fox 29 evening anchor Shana Humphreys. Shana, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm going to pull up a tweet from today because you were on my Twitter feed a lot more recently. Let's see, somebody sent you a, I think it was about a Facebook comment, a man named Jeff, and he said, uh, you are lucky to be where you are and to get some sense through those curls. And you responded, I'll continue doing my job despite them. To all the Jeffs out there, I wish you education, awareness, and healing from the poison that is white supremacy. That is a powerful thing to send to somebody on social media. And you've been getting a lot more outspoken over the past year. Um, what has that progression been like? And what's that been caused by? Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. I think this is a hard time for anybody to just exist in the world and especially on social media. So much of social media is just a cesspool. You know, it's just, it's, you know, so many people are not, are not commenting, they're not engaging in conversations to actually learn anything or get anywhere. So in some ways I, I, I've pulled back. There, there was a time when I was much younger where I would really engage with people a lot more. Um, and, you know, that becomes draining very quickly and you start to realize that there's, there's no real reason to do it all the time. So, so frequently I kind of pull back. I, I, sh I do my job and I report what I feel is relevant and useful for the people who do follow me. And sometimes, you know, I do it knowing that there's not going to be a good response because we have such a polarized country right now. There's an attack on the very concept of truth and accuracy. And, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to do your best, you're, you're researching, you, you know how to fact check and you know what you're reporting is accurate, but then you start to second guess yourself a little bit because you know you're gonna get so much pushback, but you just have to do it anyways. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I, certain stories especially, I just, I'm not reading the comments. <laughs> I just, I know better. Uh, and actually that specific comment, someone else sort of tips me off to. <laughs> uh, my, my boyfriend was, I was actually starting to like, just kind of bristle about a, a different comment that was on Twitter. And I started telling him about, he was like, oh yeah, the one on Facebook. And I was like, wait, what's on Facebook? <laughs> and as soon as he said the, he said something about, you should be happy to be where you are. And that just initially, like I, I was logged into Facebook scrolling through and uh, the way he started that comment and, and what I had shared was, was, was an article, was a news article from our website um, without comment. The, the historic fact that our current president, Donald J. Trump, has been impeached twice and that has never happened before. There was no comment, no opinion. This is, this is a fact. Whether you support this happening or not doesn't change the fact that it is true. Uh, so he started off with, what about the fair things he's done for non-white? So, you know, it, it started to take a, a racial turn and then it turned into, you should be happy with where you are, girl, um, which is a similar statement to to addressing someone as boy it is loaded there's a, a serious racial connotation and a sexist connotation uh to refer to me that way and it really just it rubbed me the wrong way and, and while i i have gotten very good at ignoring things and brushing people off and knowing when it's not worth it sometimes it's just like it doesn't sit well so i to me that was a moment that i wanted to share and not to embarrass that guy you know i blocked out his identity and i i tend to do that. I don't by any means want to use my platform as a weapon. I don't want people to go and try to attack the guy or anything. So I blocked out his, you know, his identifying information. And it, it was just a learning moment because to me, that kind of understated the, those connotations, the not blatant racism, like that's almost more dangerous because it allows people to think that there is no difference, that you're either, you're either a blatant obvious bigot or or there's no racist bone in your body that that phrase everybody loves to use but mm -hmm. no there, there was a meaning to that I understood what he meant a lot of people understood exactly what he meant when he spoke to me that way and and for me it was just I once in a while I'm going to speak up for myself and then I'm going to go back to <laughs> ignoring all the trolls for a little bit <laughs> I think what did I see the other day you uh or somebody had, had commented that you know, why aren't you talking about all the riots that happened this summer? And why aren't you covering this? And you, you fired back at him and you're like, that's all I've been talking about for the past three months. So I don't know if you're not paying yeah. attention or. Well, it's so nuts. And that's the cesspool I'm talking about because a lot of the people on Twitter who are so, they, they just, they scroll and they just wait for, for anyone to comment on certain keywords or names. And some of them, they don't even live in our area. They've never seen me on TV before. They've never seen one of my newscasts and yet they complain about my newscast, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's this anti-media sentiment. Um, 
and and yeah that guy it was a false equivalence too like you you know it, it's I don't even want to call what happened at the Capitol in early January compared to what happened last year I don't want to call it apples and oranges because I just don't even think we're talking about fruit um you know obviously I, I don't know that anyone would say violence is okay in in any scenario but there's just this tendency, especially on social media, when there's a headline that, that seems critical of whichever tribe you have pledged yourself to at this point. Uh, and then they, they they just start with the whataboutism and it doesn't it, it doesn't work. It's it I just it doesn't lead to a productive conversation to just point out something completely unrelated uh, when you don't know how to express what you're trying to say about the actual situation at hand. So yeah, sometimes I feel the need to just point out a false equivalence and I'll respond that briefly just with the word false equivalence because again, sometimes it's not worth it to really engage and, and go into a back and forth. That's not going to get anywhere. So sometimes I'll just put in a phrase and, you know, think about that. Think about what about ism. Google that. See what that means and ask yourself, are you doing that when you're arguing with people on social media? So I know a lot of these changes in the media, they've, they've been happening for a while, but it's been more on the forefront um, because of the a million crises that we're in. So now that we are hopefully at the end of some of the the political crisis in the in the pandemic, do you think that some of these you know problems on social media or you see these trends of being more opinionated are going to continue, or do you think they might revert back to what they were before? I don't know. I, I'm pretty skeptical of a lot of social media. I I I just. I, I sort of fixate on, on the idea sometimes of if you think back five, 10 and 15 years ago, just the changing landscape of social media. I don't trust um, that the current landscape is going to stay the same unchanged. I don't think 10 years from now necessarily Instagram is gonna be the end all be all just like 10 years ago. Maybe Facebook still was, but it was kind of starting to go out. We've gone through so many of these um, these, these revolutions. And no, I think it's all going to change a lot. And I think we're all just trying to, to figure it out. Um, you know, especially what we've seen with, with Twitter and the president recently and um, on both sides of the aisle conversations about big tech's role. Um, and, and I mean, something's got to be done. There's so much misinformation out there, which is it's it's a hard thing to manage. And I don't know. I don't know that anyone has a great plan to manage it. You know, certainly Certainly, there are there are many belief systems as to as to how this can be tackled, but um, I do think social media itself is going to change, and that's why I don't think it should necessarily be the end all be all of anybody's life, professionally or or personally. Um, you know, I, I I hope to see cancel culture evolve. Uh, you know, in, in some ways, it has worked. In some ways, it's been an overcorrection, and in other ways, it, it's made it's made social media very. Uh, a hateful place, a combative place, you know, a, a place where people aren't having productive conversations, they're not feeling good about themselves, it, it sort of brings out the worst in all of us, whether that's uh, being hateful towards your neighbor, or people who are different from you, or being uh, narcissistic, or on the other hand, insecure, seeing every, feeling bad about yourself and, and your life and your place in this world because of what you're seeing on there. And then, you know, when you start to think about just the role of algorithms in all of this, it's, it's, it's a it's a stressful thing <laughs> to be involved in it. Uh, so I don't know. I, I do think everything's going to change, and and I don't have any big predictions. I think we're all just trying to figure out media in general. You know, broadcast online, uh, how we're all going to continue staying informed, um, ideally with the truth. And for um, not even just journalists, but for anybody who's hoping to keep up with those changes and. Um, also maybe interact in a more positive or productive way. Uh, do you have any tips for us? I mean, you just have to be really mindful about how it's affecting you and how you are, how you're going to consume it. Uh, like I, I, I long ago turned off notifications on Instagram. So sometimes it's unfortunate because a friend might send me a message and I might not see it for hours or a day. Uh, but that is good because something about those notifications, I found that was really affecting me mentally because I was getting notifications, not from necessarily friends sending messages, but from random people just, just commenting or, and sometimes not so kindly. And, you know, it's like, you're doing one thing in your day, you're focused on whatever's going on in your life. And then you see this notification and your, your train of thought, your energy completely changes. And, and that isn't healthy to me. So I'm always just trying to balance how I use it. I, I need to use it for my job. We have to be on there. We have to be engaged. But for me, it's been trying to find the right balance between 
uh, being present and being active, but not not being so in it that you can't see the real world, not, not being so stuck in the social media world. Um, and it's tough too. I, I feel like authenticity is just a, a huge issue for me. You know, the things that, that I do feel represent my personality are not necessarily the things that the Instagram algorithm wants to show to my viewers. Case in point, if I share a picture of my dog with a caption that I think is hilarious, <laughs> Instagram might show it to, I don't know, a hundred of my followers, but if I post a selfie, you know, the facial recognition software that sees eyes and facial parts close up to a camera knows that people on Instagram tend to like, they tend to double tap selfie. So it'll show that to a lot more people. So that starts to affect what you post and what you think is worthwhile posting. If I want to look like I'm, I'm really playing the social media game and good at this, then I'm going to share more of those kind of photos that I know are going to get a lot of likes. But then you, you, you go, you do that for a little while and then it starts to feel gross to me. Like this doesn't represent, I'm not, pictures of my face and selfies are not the only thing I want to share about myself. And it, it, it's tough when you feel like that's the only thing people want to get from you. So I feel like it just, again, it encourages some of your worst impulses. So for me, it's just occasionally taking a step back uh, and just trying my best to be authentic and, and to be positive and to just ignore the rest. Cause there's a lot out there that should just be ignored. <laughs> well, you and I have some fundamental differences because pictures of my dog get significantly more interaction. Uh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> to be fair, he's incredibly cute. <laughs> I bet. You know what? I think my dog is adorable. Maybe yeah. the cutest dog in the world. I don't know. But <laughs> again, you know, you, you have a certain following when you're on TV and uh, you, you know, especially being a woman on TV, unfortunately, as much as so much progress has been made, a lot of times you're still just measured by your looks and, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes that's a blessing. Sometimes it's a curse. So I talked to Shana about so much that we couldn't fit it all into one episode. So be sure to check back next week to hear part two of our conversation. Oh, really? So what else did you talk about? Um, the time she interviewed Donald Trump um, and her decision to embrace her natural hair. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified when the episode's up. Oh, I can't wait to hear. So thanks for listening and check in next week. Bye. Bye.